Hello and off we go today for a special session of Prime Time summarizing if one can say so because yes this is going to be pretty long or let's say intense sounds better but we'll be summarizing the best of the SIHH including of course some of the brands and watches we didn't cover through our individual video reports, what were some of the trends uh, noticed, uh, how well is the watchmaking industry really going but we'll also uh, talk about a pretty important business move that kind of got unnoticed over the last few days but of real significance and count on us to talk about this uh, later on in prime time watchmaking in the news but yes this edition would simply be too intense uh, to fit in only one episode so today part one tomorrow part two because I just have too much to share with you guys and I'd want to I don't want to bore you to death with the Fidel Castro type monologue uh, let's keep this entertaining so welcome and first of all a big thank you for your numerous interaction your many comments uh, were again really insightful and i must say also very inspiring a massive uh, thanks uh, to our patrons and something i didn't really make it clear enough but for those uh, pledging five bucks or more uh, per month well they got systematically early access to our contents a nice little treat so if you want to benefit from this exceptional opportunity for our next reports and in particular during basel world and get beautiful 4K wallpapers of the nicest watch shot during the month. Well, I of course clearly invite you to join our Patreon community at the level of your liking. And this community is getting, by the way, nicely bigger and bigger. Many thanks to you. We will. Uh, it will also take a bit of time to reach our objective of 1,000 patrons. But this sincerely means a lot and really helps us in doing more and better. And this will become even more true in the very near future because I hope I will have uh, I will be able to announce something really special by the end of the month. Feeling excited about it. So Super excited. Okay, but let's now talk about watches and I will start with my kind of uh, top watches uh, seen during this SIHH and there's no particular order but personally I still want to start with the new version of the GMT by Global Force. I've already been pretty uh, transparent that I really like the GMT. I like most of its uh, different variations with a slight preference uh, for the very first model in white gold and uh, with the anthracite uh, dial. But I find that this seriously updated new timepiece called the GMT Earth is simply extraordinarily beautiful. It holds a new caliber naturally with a signature inclined uh, tourbillon and overall uh, it's well balanced uh, and the watch is just stunning. It gives it a little bit more modern feel to it and I love the idea that now the globe is a full globe as you can see uh, the South Pole and Australia on the back uh, side of the timepiece. I like the translucent sapphire disc around the uh, hour and minute hands and of course this new sapphire gloss going almost to the edge of the case. I mean it really opens the watch and invites you to even further look at it uh, or kind of dive into it. Okay I know that unfortunately I can't even put this on my wish list of watches. Uh, I would like to own one day. It's more on the gray list I should say and unfortunately there are a few watches like this one where the term wish list is just completely unrealistic. We'll be better off sticking to the maybe one day list but always uh, nice to dream a little, a little and was regardless already super nice to see it in real and place it on my wrist. That's already a pretty nice privilege. Feeling pretty grateful. Okay let's continue and let's remain nevertheless in this fantasy land territory. I must say that I was really impressed by Girard Perigo's uh, new tri-axle minute repeater. I really, I really like how the movement was architecture with in a way a sense of less is more for such a complicated timepiece uh, with more openness. I really like the use of titanium for the case. I like this uh, pretty dareful design with these I mean original uh, front and back curved uh, sapphire glass and yes I know that this watch I mean, is pretty thick kind of really sticks out on your wrist but a really nice development for Girard Perigo and our good friend Stefano Macaluzzo. I mean in general GP's uh, new watch were pretty nice uh, but I still think that they are aiming a bit too high with the relaunch of the Laureato. It started well and you guys know that I like the Laureato but uh, not sure if, they, if the market is ready or willing to give uh, these watches a viable commercial space at this price point. I mean it's already taken by Royal Oaks and Nautiluses but again nice watches and I think they should uh, focus on simpler models where I think there is room for. Okay maybe they want to create some hype or buzz on these uh, new more high-end versions that will benefit the simpler ones but I'm not sure if that works anymore. Okay let's now talk about concept watches and I won't be too original but the Piaget Altiplano ultimate concept with its mere two millimeter thickness was something really impressive to see. Uh, they say they built three of them uh, but kind of really insisted on the fact that it was really a concept watch and we shouldn't expect it on the market anytime soon. We'll see about this or how they can transpose some of this technical development in uh, future watches but I like that they really pushed the boundaries of mechanical uh, feasibility with this one and more 
importantly, I think that Piaget got seriously annoyed that Bulgari has taken all the spotlight, additional to significant commercial success of the last three years, with its various octo models when it comes uh, to ultra thin watches. Uh, that must uh, really beep them off. Piaget had to do something to claim back a position for which they've been communicati uh, communicating extensively in terms of the brand's true legitimacy and uniqueness. Okay, we know that Piaget's business has been seriously hurt over the last few years. It was uh, pretty highly dependent on the Chinese market and this market drastically evaporated for them and they lost kind of they just lost their mojo. So it's a brand which unfortunately was a pretty good example of what I sometimes refer to as the arrogance found in this uh, industry and times have changed for them. They went through some uh, pretty serious reorganization, uh, staff have been let go and the introduction uh, a couple of years ago of the Polo S, the first steel watch of the brand, illustrates their necessity of, uh, of adapting their model but sincerely I'm not uh, too sure that uh, that particular line is the key to their revival. I mean nevertheless this Altiplano ultimate concept is clearly a great attempt of regaining the reputation the brand deserves. Hats off uh, to them for this achievement and uh, so to say commercial version presented with the Altiplano Ultimate, that's all, the thinnest automatic watch uh, with a new record for them at 4.3 millimeter thick and this is already pretty amazing. I mean I love the peripheral rotor, a nice watch, uh, nice watch. I hope it will be a success uh, in the direction that corresponds much more uh, to them. Still staying in the world of thin watches, I really like the Audemars Piguet RD2 concept watch, the world's uh, thinnest perpetual calendar, only 6.3 millimeter thick. And this one, I'm pretty convinced that uh, it will come out as a sellable product uh, in the near future. It took the AP team five years of development and the main characteristic lies in how they managed to architecture and design completely new components to fulfill the needs of this QP mechanism. They didn't go in too many details on this, uh, how it was achieved, but I'm pretty sure we'll soon have better opportunities to find out uh, much more uh, in detail about this impressive development. So I was very happy to see that uh, some serious innovation came from AP. Innovation being essential to, to keep your game up there even when you have a killer product like the Royal Oak and yes I could totally see this RD2 sit on my wrist one day. Totally. Maybe. So another watch illustrating perfectly this uh, innovation dimension and that I particularly like is the new Recense Type 2 with its e-crown system. And I was a bit frustrated by the individual video report that we aired about it because I think you didn't really grasp what it was all about. I mean, first of all, I really like uh, Recense. They've really brought some freshness with their original uh, time display mechanism. And to simplify this to the maximum, what they've developed is that uh, based on a normal mechanical movement, they uh, only use the information coming from the minute hand onto which they add their very own gears and modules to either accelerate or slow down this unique time information to display hour and seconds on these rotating discs. This is what they call the ROX module standing for Ressens Orbital Convex System and okay I hope you got me uh, on this one and yes it would require a re proper report solely on this uh, I concur. Anyhow with this new type 2 uh, watch uh, there is an extra electromechanical module made out of 87 components which which is placed between the traditional mechanical movement and this rocks display and this revolutionizes the role of the crown which they simply call the e-crown. Still following? So you set up and wind your watch uh, kind of the normal way on the back of the watch but then electronic takes over to keep your watch always on time. It automatically auto-corrects uh, the display time uh, information based on the initial reference time you set on its first use. And this is uh, when it gets uh, really really cool but when you stop using it, uh, mean, meaning that uh, you stop winding it, well, when you wind it back and therefore refuel your watch uh, with mechanical energy, well, you simply have to tap the dial face and the watch will set automatically to the correct time. Pretty cool, no? And it's still a mechanical watch. I mean, that's the point. If you take out this electromechanical module, this watch will still work. And for info, this little module uh, uses a very small amount of energy, which comes from uh, kinetic movement uh, when you wear the watch, uh, like uh, automatic movement, or by some kind of solar power sensors that you barely see. So a lot of development, a lot of innovation, and even though this was a prototype, they are going to release this in the very near future. And I love the idea that uh, at the origin, Benoit Maintiens, the founder of the brand, is an industrial
interior designer and therefore his fresh approach to uh, watchmaking and his uh, outside, uh, outside the box thinking really brings something really inspiring on the table. I think uh, really contributes, uh, contributes in keeping watchmaking a fantastic field for novelty and unexpected innovation. So this is a smart watch, uh, meaning really smart, but you also have an app that will go uh, with it and help uh, set the different time zones for instance. Okay, so that's it uh, for my selection of the best watches seen. We'll quickly add a special mention for Ore because that AMC is simply something out of this world. I know they teased us a little bit with it, uh, but a 21st century reinterpretation of the Pendule Sympathique done by Breguet almost some 200 years ago is just a fantastic idea. And when I say uh, they, teases, uh, they teased us, I have to be totally honest because I saw a bit more uh, than what we could really show. A uh, more advanced prototype and I really promise you that uh, this is going to be just absolutely incredible when we uncover this at uh, Basel. Just really out of this world. And I will also give a special mention for Ferdinand Berthoud with his regulator FB1R.0.6-1. Yes, sounds almost like a Star Wars character, but really like the stealth look of this watch uh, with this uh, matte finishing, uh, but in particular the large dial cover hiding this spectacular tubing movement. I mean, they managed to hype this piece up and is simply, I think, jaw-dropping by my taste. So let's uh, now talk about some other interesting thing uh, seen at this HH and of course some other watches or collections not yet mentioned. But no, because it's now time that we will make our little pause and we'll see each other tomorrow because this edition of Primetime would have been just too crazy long. Yeah, I know, got carried away. But there is just, again, so much to say. So thanks for watching and see you real soon for episode two where we'll uh, uncover many other interesting watches, uh, the trends witnessed there, a general appreciation of the business and as promised, a pretty significant news for the industry, another of these shocker moves. So see you tomorrow. Thanks for your time.